begins with me, I'm on vacation up north doing, which to anybody else would be a nightmare. What is wrong with you? Why can't you just leave this thing alone? It's not in my nature. Eventually I get a telephone call. Constable Fraser, there's a call for you from Chicago. But I arrive to discover that my apartment building has been burnt to the ground and all indications are it's arson. Fraser, buddy. You have a good time up there in the Northwest areas? Uh, territories, you mean? Wilderness, huh? Exactly. Me, personally, I leave the city, I come down with this skin condition. The setup for the existence of this character is that David Marciano's character has gone deep undercover, and in order to preserve his safety, we've installed this guy who answers to being Ray Vecchio. Who are you? We're kidding around, Fred. You know who I am. I assure you, I am not kidding around. Here you go, Ray. Files one through seven in the background of the Johnson case. His new assignment is working with the Mountie Man. Raymond Vecchio, Detective First Grade, Chicago Police Department. Everyone here knows who I am, Fraser. How about you? Ray Vecchio. For you. Listen, what a shame about your apartment building. Homeless, huh? What an ugly word. Well, you could always move in with your friend Vecchio. I'm not at all convinced that he is my friend, actually. A lot of the first episode, the, the nature of how the relationship comes together and his confusion of why it's happening and what's happening with it and why I'm assigned. Callum is, is a lot more uh, oddball and unstable than David. Janie, even they thought that Friday night be a great first date. Crystal Ballroom, the band, martinis, me. My dog has a foot fungus that needs some attention. All right. Is there a karmic chi love thing happening there or what? But I think a, a very similar relationship exists, which is sort of a a bit fractious, but actually they do still get along very well. I have no idea who you are, but if you insist on maintaining the charade of being Ray Vecchio, it may be of interest for you to know that I have reason to believe your house is about to burn down. Got it. Got it. I know it is remarkable, although Horacio Serratus can withstand fluctuations in temperature far greater than generally known. You went into a burning building for fish? No, not exclusively. Deep, keep an eye on it. That man just went into a burning building for fish. Actually, they do still get along very well, and they need each other and couldn't really function effectively without one another, so it's... It's a kind of nice symbiosis. My heart's going 100 miles an hour. Fraser, feel my heart. Tell me it's not going 100 miles an hour. Franny, your heart's fine. Excuse me, Francesca, do you know this man? Yeah, of course I do. Doesn't he know? I think he's a comedian, hearty, ha, ha, ha. So did you hear or see anything? It's a loving competition of two different styles of people, one being uh, more aggressive in, in pursuit of what he does. Hey, Fraser. You know that, Excuse me, folks. I mean, I know what, what you know, you know, and, and what everybody else knows, and, and all of that is um, known. Do, do you know what I'm saying? I have no idea what you're saying. It's a lot of fun, and we, and we do b uh, blend very well together in terms of improvisation and a lot of stuff. We'll script, but we'll just sort of get on a riff and go. As soon as I met Paul, I thought this is going to be fun, and I, I've never worked in a comedic... Um, premise before. I think it would be extremely difficult to do the jobs I'm doing now uh, if I didn't know the character well. Um, and yeah, it does help to, it helps a lot in terms of writing that I know the character extremely well and also now have a pretty good feel for the general flow of the show and that's only something that you kind of come to after being intimately involved with it for a number of years. But the car's gonna blow! No, it is not. It is very, very, very rare that a car ever actually explodes. Then 
Single note. Equip your vehicle with the fire extinguisher. I am all over that. We gotta find a safe place to deposit this car. We have uh, three cameras. One is on the spit down there. Straight in? Straight in. One is going to be in uh, one of our uh, uh, boats. We're getting closer. I can see that. And one is down here locked off. It's a 14 millimeter and it sees the front of the launch crates. Lots and lots of little things that you may not scream laughing at, but they're, I don't know, they make me, you get that kind of smile of, that's, uh, ah, that's kind of fun. I don't imagine there's ever been or ever will be anyone quite like this character, not only uh, among the RCMP, but I imagine on the planet in general. We have a lot of fun, don't we, you and I? <laughs> More fun than a barrel of monkeys. It's bold and up front, and you have to commit to it in a way that makes you nervous that you're not sure if it's working because you go, I'm way too loud, I'm way too big, this isn't working, you know? And, and so you, and you're coming into a show that's already been established and certain things have been established. So you, there's a certain type of pressure that you know that you try to keep the ball in the air and try to keep it alive in a certain way. Life. Uh, may I just say, sir, and I'm by no means an expert, but that muted green with the flecks of gold, I think would be a wonderful compliment to the woodwork, the walls, and your eyes. The one thing that's kept it going, and has kept it afloat all those, th through the difficult periods, has been that fan base. And it's pretty remarkable. I don't know too many shows that have that kind of core, loyal following that it's, uh, and we owe all of, to all of us being here, we owe it to them. They're the ones who really made it possible. Thank you.